Hi, so I'm Blake Johnson. I'm from Raytheon BBM Technologies. Um, many of you probably uh, don't know about BBM, but we're uh, down the road Mass, Mass Ave, uh, basically next to the ALYF T-stop. Um, so uh, uh, I'm going to talk to you about some tools that I've built with uh, my colleagues, uh, Colin Ryan and Marcus Da Silva, uh, that allow us to quickly build uh, simulations of quantum systems. Uh, so to kind of set up the problem, what my group does is we work on uh, building small superconducting quantum processors. Uh, I don't want to go too much into the details of quantum computing. Um, I'm happy to talk about it with anyone that's interested, uh, but to give you a sort of the scale of the problem and why we need these tools. So uh, what you see here is a, a device from a couple years ago. This is a quote unquote three qubit processor, uh, and, but this is, has more than just three elements. So the, the qubits are these uh, structures that you see in the squares there. Uh, and then the meandering lines are coplanar waveguide resonators. So this is a microwave device. You manipulate it by shining uh, microwave pulses on this thing. And you use, do that to both change the states of the bits and to read them out. Um, but so in addition to the three qubits, you also have uh, these resonators. And so this actually has uh, something like eight quantum objects that you're trying to manipulate. So uh, these, the status of these things are really physics experiments. Uh, and so uh, things often go wrong. And when they go wrong, uh, you need, it, need some, some mechanism of, of, of answering how they go wrong. And in fact, the problem's gotten worse in, in, in recent years. This is actually a device that's a couple years old. Devices these days look more like this. This is an eight qubit processor uh, with uh, 12 resonators. So we have 20 elements on here. Uh, so a lot more things can go wrong fast. So we need tools that allow us to quickly build simulations of, of these uh, devices uh, so that we can get some understanding of did we, is our control sequence wrong or is, the, is there something about the device parameters that, that is causing the problem. So to be concrete, what we really need is a tool that allows us to build uh, Hamiltonians uh, without having to do the kind of index gymnastics of I'm, I'm putting pieces together. So for instance, I want to build models of increasing complexity. I want to build the simplest model I can get away with that allows me to answer my question. Uh, but I might start with, for instance, trying to build a quote-unquote two-qubit model. Um, and so uh, what you end up building are things like, um, so here is a, a Hamiltonian for a, a two-qubit system where you have one term, which is, uh, so these are poly operators. So you see something here, I'm representing the Kronecker product of just two operators that are next to each other. So you have one term for one qubit, another term for another. They're coupling, in this case, I'm modeling is just a capacitive coupling. So this is a quote unquote XX coupling. And then I have a control term. This is, these are all time independent and I have one time dependent term that allows me to, to, to change the state of one of those qubits. I'm sorry? Oh, sorry. So this is basically a time dependent, a time dependent term, which is omega of t. And then I have something which is just rotating at some frequency and then couples to the x of the, of the first qubit. Um, so if that's not enough, I might need to be explicit about the coupling, because I don't, maybe I don't actually have a capacitor coupling, then maybe I have one of these resonators. And so I might want to replace that with another term. And I want to be able to quickly switch between these sorts of models by just kind of, you know, I have these building blocks. I can kind of color code them like this as different pieces. I should be able to write down models the same way by just kind of stringing pieces together is kind of the dream. Um, and so on, right? So uh, these are basically become large, uh, sparse um, linear algebra problems. Uh, where this kind of the size of the, the matrices that you're building are kind of exponential in the number of elements you're stitching together, right? So um, in our solution methods, we have a few different that are built into our Q simulator package. Uh, one is for unitary evolution. This is assuming uh, essentially no decay, no dissipation in your system. Uh, and um, in general, you have a, a time-dependent Hamiltonian. You need to find some way to, to solve it. A convenient way is to basically break down your problem uh, into a set of time independent terms. So we were taking a continuous time problem and breaking discretizing it into discrete time points. Uh, and then uh, there's a, a numerical trick that you can use for doing these, these matrix exponentials if uh, our systems are Hermitian. So the, the kind of the fast way to solve uh, 
to do this matrix exponential is to do kind of a eigenvalue decomposition. And actually, this is something that is built into base Julia. Uh, if you just declare that your matrix is Hermitian and you ask for the exponential of it, it will do this trick for you, uh, which is pretty cute. Uh, we end up going even one step further because uh, Actually, you don't even need this u itself. You want to know its action on some vector. So if you never actually care about constructing u explicitly, uh, you can uh, do kind of standard sparse matrix tricks uh, to kind of delay the, the valuation of, of this. Uh, we also have ways of including dissipation in, in, the, in the simulation. Uh, that, that math is even more complicated. But essentially, it, it boils down to doing the same kind of problem, but kind of twice the size, or the square of the size, really. So with that, let me try to sh show this kind of in real time. So that actually do what I want? OK, so um, basically, the, the building blocks here, the way this works is you have, um, we have a kind of a library of, of basic objects. Uh, qubit here basically means a two-level system, a, a system with just two states. Uh, and you can add new, new types of objects to the system by basically declaring what the action of Hamiltonian is, when the, defining a, a new method of Hamiltonian on that object. Uh, and uh, here, this, the, the units are kind of uh, uh, factored out. So I interpret these things as, as gigahertz or microwave, because these are microwave devices, but it's whatever you want it to be. Uh, and if I'm talking about gigahertz, then my time is going to be nanoseconds. Uh, then I have time-dependent objects, so I have like a drive uh, signal, which I've matched in frequency to one of these two qubits. Uh, and then I can construct systems by just using, um, kind of overloading the, the addition operator. Uh, this kind of goes to what Jeff was asking this morning about what does add mean. Here it really means something particularly uh, bizarre, right? I'm constructing a composite uh, uh, system of all these different parts where I have more convenience functions for describing how you get two parts to talk to each other, whether it's through uh, one of these XX interactions like I was showing on the previous page, or um, we have uh, other uh, interaction terms that allow you to describe how like a dipole coupling between an electric field and, and a qubit. So uh, most of these objects are time independent. I need a, some way to actually load the time dependence in the system so I can I have some, some way to load a, a sequence uh, into uh, things like drives. And then uh, you, know, you can do basic things like asking, what is the spectrum of this system that I've now created? Um, and you see, I, I put together two objects that were at four and four and a half gigahertz, and I get back a system that basically has a small shift because of the coupling between them. But then um, you can do a simple simulation. So I want to know, I want to construct this unitary evolution. And you can ask for uh, a unitary propagator uh, of the system. And uh, so this, uh, this runs fairly quickly. Um, and what you get out in this case, I'm doing a resonant drive of, of a two-level system. And you get back, well, that's really big. Uh, you get back what's a so-called Ravi oscillation. So this is a system that's evolving between the zero and one state. Um, and something which is particularly nice in Julia is that uh, uh, oftentimes we're looking at how our system changes with as we're changing a parameter. So this is eminently uh, uh, available for uh, uh, um, trivial parallelization. And that so you can use, uh, I'm not, I haven't demonstrated that here, but you can get sort of uh, parameter sweeps here. We look at that same sort of simulation, but now changing the amount of the, ch the drive frequency as well as time. So going back to the presentation. Uh, so I guess what I wanted to show then is just that this sort of thing actually does correspond with reality. This is some data set I found on my computer this morning. Uh, it's a similar kind of thing happening on a, on a real device where I'm, I'm driving, changing the, the length of the drive in one axis and the frequency of the drive in the other, and you see uh, Ravi oscillations. Uh, so with that, I just want to uh, say that this is a, an open source tool. You can download it right now, uh, and uh, thank you for your attention.